Gil here with the Sailing Vessel Dream Chaser. And in this week's video, I'm going to show you how to make a vacuum bagging system out of materials you can either have laying around at home, you can pick up at a local store, and it works phenomenal for doing deck repairs. Hope you guys enjoy this video. More to come. Before I attempt to um, epoxy this uh, cut section of the deck back down, uh, I'm going to attempt to just do a quick test of how I might vacuum bag this. I'm going to try and make my own vacuum bag, essentially putting plastic, taping it down to the deck around the surface I'm going to be doing, and just hooking it around a, um, a shop vac. I've heard this is a great way to do it. Um, eventually what I'll do is I'll thicken some epoxy, like a peanut butter thick consistency, put it down on the, on the new core, put, the, uh, put a buttered piece of the back side of the, uh, the top piece of the deck down on top of that, and then vacuum seal it all down. I won't bore you with all the details, but I will say I did the test, and it really worked well. I just uh, put a piece of plastic down. I did learn one thing. Um, you can't just wrap the plastic around the nozzle of the shop vac. The plastic will suck into it. So I ended up using um, essentially that same thing you've seen me use before on the deck. I took an old, uh, basically an all crawfish plate, and I cut a third of it off, and I stuck the, uh, hose, the hose nozzle on the other end. Um, that was a good way to keep the plastic from getting sucked up into the nozzle, and you'll see it in more detail later in the video. Well, if you recall, just last night I did a quick test of a vacuum bagging uh, solution here just to see how well it would work. Um, now, before I actually go ahead and put a thickened epoxy down here, I just want to smooth this out a little bit. I had, um, I had poured some epoxy down between some of these openings just to get a start. I'm going to thicken some up like a peanut butter consistency, fill in these gaps, and then I'll ultimately do a vacuum bag down to it. But I have some ridges that I just need to get smoothed down so that the new surface um, does not um, raise up above this. It stays nice and, down, nice and down tight with it. So here we go with uh, a little bit of grinding. I know you guys have all seen me grind fiberglass before, so I'm going to buzz right through this, but uh, after grinding it, I did go ahead and clean it all up with the, with the shop vac and got rid of all the bits of uh, epoxy, uh, resin, and sawdust that came up with it. I finished wiping all this down with acetone, and I've also cleaned the bottom side of the pieces that are going to be put back in here. Uh, at this point, I'm going to get a little thickened epoxy, and I'm going to fill in these cracks with a peanut butter consistency. Let that dry a little bit before I come back and put my uh, my thickened epoxy across the whole thing on both pieces, put it down on here, and essentially vacuum seal it down. Away we go. This is always the time you realize something silly. Ran out of the 405 uh, silica powder to thicken the epoxy. Got to run to West. I just need a small amount and go pick it up real quick. I actually have a bunch of micro balloons ordered for my polyester fairing test. It'll be a couple more days before they're in, so I'm going to go buy a small package of this just to get this part done because I want to take advantage of the good weather. Sorry. I had to go get me some more of the micro balloons. Now, if you have a boat and you do repairs, you likely have an epoxy bin, as do I. a lot of feedback from folks saying that by doing this, it just keeps my thickened epoxy from having the moisture wicked out essentially into the substrate before it. Now I'd already done this once before on this surface, but uh, as you saw before, I wanted to ground this a little bit smoother. And when I did, I removed a little bit of that layer of epoxy that I had put on there. And again, I'm not trying to go thick here. The purpose is not to create a, a thickened um, section at all. It's really just to give it a little bit more surface to grab onto. All right, so this is getting thicker. It's almost to my peanut butter consistency. I'd say I'm at about somewhere between mayonnaise and peanut butter. That's going to be good enough because it's starting to kick. The can's actually getting hot. I'm going to pour some of this out so that I can get it to stop heating up so bad. The chemical reaction in there. Hey, hopefully the camera can see me. I don't want this to show me, so I'm going to go away. So I'm spreading this out with um, a West Marine spreader. It has small notches in it so that as I'm spreading it out, it is, um, it's leaving little tiny lines or grooves be below it and that maintains a consistent thickness across the entire surface.
taking the top layer of deck, I flipped it over and I'm spreading the uh, peanut butter consistency epoxy resin on the bottom side of that material as well. Again, I'm using the small notches in the spreader to ensure I have a nice even consistency. I'm just going to go ahead and flip this over and put the two epoxy sides together mated on the deck itself and I'm lining this up a lot like you would think of tile, right? Because uh, when I cut this, there's a gap about as wide as the saw blade between each of these. So as I put it down, I want to make sure I maintain that same level of um, uh, small crack around the whole edge uh, about the thickness of my original saw blade. And now we just repeated this with the other two pieces. There's actually three total in this part of the deck. So now I've just taken a simple painter's tarp. This is just something you can buy at your local hardware store or paint supply store. I think this was actually two or three mil thick um, clear plastic painter's, uh, a painter's drop cloth. Uh, make sure it's plastic. They do sell some that are made of material like a canvas, but if you get the plastic ones and nice and thin like three mil, I think it's probably sufficient. Um, at least for a flat surface. If I were doing something that was going around a lot of curves, I might have chosen a thicker one. Uh, but I definitely wanted clear because I wanted to be able to see this. And you can see I'm really just using painter's tape. And right under where my hands are now, you can see the device I'm using. Uh, as I mentioned earlier in the video, uh, I, couldn't, um, I couldn't just put the hose right in there, otherwise it would suck the uh, the plastic up into the end of the hose. So you've probably seen me use this green disc before. It's basically a crawfish plate where I cut a third of it off of there and then I took a one inch paddle bit and drilled the hole in the side of it and it's just been filed it out just big enough to shove the uh, end of the of the hose into it. Um, by setting it on top of one of the pieces here that I need to adhere down, what it allows it to do is, and you'll see it in the video, it actually compresses down, but what it allowed me to do is not be in a place where the plastic was going to get all wrapped up um, into the end of the intake and essentially cut off any vacuum pressure that it has. So uh, again, as you see, I'm just lining this with painter's tape. I actually bought Gorilla Tape, like duct tape. I was going to initially use that. But when I ran my test, I found that the painter's tape was more than sufficient, and it comes up and off the deck very easily. Um, so just uh, I'll, I'll fast forward to the end of this here before we, uh, before we turn the vacuum on. But I will note, um, you know, be sure that you fill in any holes. So for example, right about where the tape is now, you see that little hole in the deck. That's actually just in the upper surface. But if that were like a drill hole that went all the way down through, uh, I would have to make sure I put tape on it or something. Otherwise, it would be sucking the air in from the bottom and essentially wouldn't give me a good vacuum seal. So that's all there was to this. It actually was not very hard. It took only a few minutes. And um, I think I paid about $2 for this tarp. It's a 9 by 12. And uh, you know, I, I, I could probably get three of these jobs out of that one, that one um, painter's drop cloth. So here we go. All right, so now that I've got this tape down, I'm going to turn the vacuum on. And you'll see this push down. And ultimately, everything should pull down nice and tight. this little corner right here just to push down a little bit more so I'm gonna gently place these right on that section there we go Nice. I pulled it right in where I wanted it. So the beauty of this is I'm actually seeing a, a little bit of the epoxy come up through some of these holes in the deck, which tells me it's actually applying that pressure nice and good. It's enough to start pushing it up around the edges. A little bit coming in the seams, which is exactly what I want. Good solid connection here. So this should be uh, this should be golden. I'm going to go ahead and let this run for probably an hour or so. 
So far, I'm really happy with this. So we're about 30 minutes later, and I'll get the camera down real low here so you can see just how well it pulled that top layer right down fairly level with the surface around it. Um, you can see how the little this plate thing sort of crushed down, but not so much that it's not still letting air in these little edges. Um, but you can see how well it conformed to it. Um, and what I was really thrilled about is just how much it started to pull the epoxy up through the cracks. Like even here, these old screw holes is pulling up epoxy into it, which tells me this is getting a great um, pressure on it. It's exactly what I wanted to see. Uh, it's coming up most of the edges. As a matter of fact, right around the vacuum nozzle, I've got a, a little bit extra there. I'll have to sand that down. Um, but I, I am thrilled with this. This is exactly what I wanted. I'm going to come up on deck here and show you this is sort of the homemade vacuum bag and it works uh, It works pretty darn well. You can see the uh, little crawfish dish that I modified to put down underneath the plastic and the plastic is formed very tightly up against it. But the beauty of this is that this has formed a really good bond. I'm very pleased. That's three different pieces of fiberglass decking underneath that and all adhered very well. Good stuff. I'm pleased with it. We'll uh, let this run for a couple more hours. It's been, I guess it's probably been about um, an hour and 45 minutes that I've had the vacuum bag on it after the epoxy started to pot. So all in all, I'm thrilled with the results of this. Um, the next step will just be to ground a small strip right along where that joint is, and then I will um, I will lay in a couple of small strips of um, fiberglass mat. It'll completely seal the deck. Remember, eventually I'm going to have another couple of layers of mat over the entire deck, so more than sufficient, uh, as strong if not stronger than the original boat itself. So I hope you guys found this useful. This was really a, a much easier job than I thought it was going to be. And I think it's going to yield great results. So for anybody that has to do a deck repair, um, this is a way to really, uh, you could easily do a section of the deck in one day. Um, you could cut the top of it. You could remove the old core. Uh, as long as it wasn't saturated, requiring you to dry it out, you could put new core in it, uh, put some epoxy on it, put the, uh, put the peanut butter consistency, glue it back down and vacuum bag it. And, and seriously, in one afternoon, you could have uh, the primary repair done with just some more time to, um, to fill at the edge and put a couple of pieces of uh, mat around that grooved edge. Um, great way to do it. So thanks to whoever had the suggestion. It was really helpful. If you guys found this helpful, do me a favor. Please um, like the video, share it, subscribe to the channel. We'd love to have you stop on by and we'll notify you when we have new, uh, new, new content. We try and do something every week. So from the Sailing Vessel Dream Chaser, safe sailing folks. Hey everybody, thanks for watching. And please follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or even Tumblr. Please take a moment and go over to our website at svdreamchaser.com to download free resources for cruising and how-to projects. Get your thumbs and mouses ready. We also have a couple of links right on the screen for some other playlists and videos that we think you'll enjoy. Thanks for watching, fellow dreamers.